What is going on, beautiful people? I am Wesley from West the Critic here on YouTube, the one place on the World Wide Web where we give you an honest review on cinema. I am here to talk to you about fear. Now, I saw this movie two weeks ago, but I had the opportunity to speak to a social media buddy of mine, uh, Jay, and he reminded me or asked me if I had saw the movie. <laughs> um, and then he reminded me about how you know, my thoughts and feelings were about the movie as I was watching the movie. So I wanted to talk about it. I was supposed to do this like two weeks ago. If this is your first time seeing me, follow me on my social media, Instagram and Twitter at West the Critic. I am a reviewer, not a reporter. So I'm, I feel like my reviews give you like that raw, authentic kind of review. This is not an overly produced and or overly edited video. But let's get into it. A weekend vacation turns sinister when a group of friends must confront their worst fears one by one. And I'm assuming that that was the log line for this film because this synopsis doesn't really tell me anything about the film. It's like, hmm, okay, even the log line has me wanting more. It has a 3.5 out of 10 on IMDb, a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 1.7 out of 5 for Movie Insider, 62% like this movie on Google. It is directed by Dion Taylor, distributed by Hidden Empire Releasing, production company Him Hidden Empire Film Group. The cast is T.I., Joseph Sikora, Terrence J., King Bach, Ruby Medine, Jessica Elaine, uh, uh, Ido Goldberg, Annie Einze, Tyler Abram, and Evan Shafran. I'm sure I butchered all of those names, but it's okay because this movie butchered my mind. Okay, this is not a movie you should see. I'm gonna tell you right out the rip. <laughs> and I'm sorry that my review is too late because you've probably already wasted your money and or have pirated it on social media, on the website, but this movie is utter trash, okay? Why is this movie trash? Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> We're gonna start off with the actors. T.I. playing Lou, no. T.I. didn't play Lou in this film, he played T.I. in this film. He played T.I. getting paid to play someone else, play T.I. in a lodge, in the woods, to celebrate someone's birthday, what? Don't get it. Joseph Sakura. why? Why was he casted? Was he casted for his role in 50 Cent's film? I, you know, in the series, I, you know, I never watched Power is what it was called, I believe. I never watched Power, could never get into it. It was too, of something. It was too much of something. I don't know if it was too much of spaghetti sauce on the sauce. You know, the sauce that you put on spaghetti, how just like drowning or too much cheese on macaroni or too much jelly on the PB&J. It was just too much of something. So I didn't watch it. But Joseph Sakura, no. Terrence J. Terrence J is beautiful to look at, but in this film, that's all that he is. It's beautiful to look at. Um, J King Bach, I saw some potential, but I was like, I, I just. <laughs> uh, Ruby probably was the best actress in this film, and that's not saying much. Um, Jessica Elaine, I think this was the one that left early because she wanted to get her child. I think that's her. I can't recall, I can't remember. And then the rest of them, Ido, Goldberg, he was all right. The acting was abysmal. That's the one word I would use for the acting on this. I felt like I was watching people with some sort of name trying to play someone in a film. And keyword, trying. The acting was abysmal. That is the word here. Okay, we're gonna talk about this script. I don't know who wrote this. I'm looking at uh, Google and I'm not about to even try to figure out who wrote this because I don't care, okay? This movie was released January 27th of this year and the script is atrocious. It's the everyday run of the mill trope of friends going off to this place in the world for whatever reason, for a particular reason, but again, for whatever reason, and they die. And you know, that's a common regular trope in, in horror film, you know? And as I was discussing it with Jay, I was I, we were talking because we're both black. Has there been a good, well-produced, well-acted film, black film in horror? And there hasn't been. And Fear just added to the collection of movies that just haven't been that fantastic. If there has been, let me know because I would love to watch it. 
You know, unpopular opinion, not a fan to get out. I watched it after all the hoopla and I was like, what? Not a fan of Us. Us was good in the beginning, suffered miserably from the middle to the end. Not a fan of Nope. Tremendous budget. Great special effects. That's it. The best part about Nope was Kiki Palmer. And then there's Fear. I just couldn't get it. I didn't get it. I just couldn't get it. Uh, the rating I would give this movie is a 2 out of 10, okay? If for whatever reason you want to see what this movie is like, go check it out. But I'm giving it a 2 out of 10. Now uh, is the part of my review where I review it. Alright, now if you don't want anything spoiled, turn the video off. But if you've seen it and you're curious about my thoughts, keep watching. Now, from the beginning of this film, we have uh, Annie, who plays Bianca. I, I, I'm thinking I'm getting the ladies correct. I could be wrong. But the main black chick is uh, going out with Rom, who's played by Joseph Sakura. This is a car ride at the beginning of the film. Completely annoyed. Immediately annoyed. Because I already, I already get budget, in all caps. Budget film. Indie filming is okay. Indie filming can be fantastic. But I feel like when you're dealing with these companies that have the ability to get the money to distribute their film in theaters, that means they have the money. They have some sort of money to film. Okay? So, so there, there, it could be indie level. It could be budget level. But it should not give budget when I watch it and y'all got money. You know? Now, if give me money. I mean, the stuff that I fear is like something that's on watch ACTV and, and no shade. But I don't have the money to produce a film like Fear. So immediately as an indie filmmaker, I watch these films. I'm like, why? Why are they giving us this? And this car ride between uh, Joseph Sikora and the leading lady, I couldn't get through it. Immediately I felt like I was going to be, uh, I was in this trap. I didn't came here because I saw that somebody liked it on Twitter. And I don't know why Twitter is a valuable for a source. Uh, of information in terms of like reviewing because they got another weak ass movie wrong and I'm gonna talk about that after this uh, called The Reading Trash but um I, I didn't believe that they were together I didn't believe that they loved each other I didn't believe that they were interested and the writing was just so slow paced and like hey do you see that sun over there yes I see that sun over there hey do you see the cloud that is about to go past the sun? Yeah, it's a beautiful cloud that is about to go past the sun. That's what they gave me in this whole car ride. And this was supposed to be a setup of the vacation of a lifetime that these people are going on. Mind you, I thought that they were going on the trip by themselves. And I just was immediately creeped out. Immediately creeped out. Did not believe Sakura was this nerd with glasses on that was dating this black woman and he's about to take her on this fantastical getaway. He pulls over to the side of the road and blindfolds her. I'm like, he about to kill her. Why? Why am I thinking he about to kill her? Because he white and she black and they out in the mountains. This is regular stuff that comes to my mind. <laughs> I'm like, she dumb. Why is she getting blindfolded on the side of the road in mountain, mountainous territory? And, and she's being led to believe that this is supposed to be some fantastic situation. Yeah, they're in love, but that's how people die all day long. Or we all year long. We hear about all the catastrophes. They have real shows called, what is that show called? Where the wife or the husband kills the spouse. I can't remember. But I'm like, immediately, I'm like dead on arrival. But she's blindfolded. He takes her to this rickety old lodge that somehow him and his friends were able to book. I don't know where they book full lodges and these people work regular jobs. <laughs> I'm like, is this P. Diddy? Is this Tyler Perry? Is this Oprah? How are they getting the funding to, for this lodge? Then they kind of like explained it, but I, I, I missed the detail because I was just worried about how poor this movie was. So I'm sure they talked about how they were able to get the lodge. I think the white dude was explaining it in the lobby. <laughs> But I still, I missed it. I missed it because I was, I was confused by why I sat here and watched this. Then, then, okay, it's the girl's birthday. And the dude is supposed to, Ram Sakura, Joseph Sakura is supposed to, uh, 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 propose, excuse me, I can't get the words out. Propose to this woman, but he doesn't for fear of whatever. 
And so they get into the lodge. We see that it's this group thing. And I see Terrence J and I see T.I. I didn't know who was going to be in this movie. I see them in this and I'm like, okay, what is about, what is about to get? 104 in Park? I was so confused. I was so confused. I was like, Terrence J is beautiful to look at, but he was horrible to listen to in this film. Acting abysmal, right? So that's the setup. White man takes black woman on a getaway to an old rickety lodge that him and his other diverse group of friends book. So he could propose to her, but he doesn't propose to her because he's scared and instead he wants to celebrate her birthday, which passed a week or two weeks ago. What? <laughs> Baby, they get in this lodge and this woman that looks so like miscast and out of place. Like, I felt like she was a different color than everyone else. And mind you, the only thing that I really liked about this film was the cinematography. But there were points where I felt like she was brown and the rest of the people were colored. I don't, I don't know. And not in terms of, like, race. But in terms of, like, being black and white on screen and the rest of the screen is in full color. I felt like she was a beige gray brown. And everyone else was a different LUT. Okay? And LUT is lookup table. And in film, it's like a colored grading over film. And so I was confused by her, didn't understand her. She didn't give me scary person taking care of an old lodge out of nowhere. She didn't give me none of that. She gave me, oh, she was an assistant on the film and we asked her to play a role. That's what it gave me. Then the lady is all creeping, creep vibes all day long, gives them a bottle of old wine that they have to drink and, and commemorate their, you know, stay here. Then she takes pictures of them and stuff. I don't know, the setup was very, very confusing to me. I just couldn't understand it. But they stay. They stay because they want to celebrate it. And mind you, this film was done, I'm assuming, and produced during the COVID, like during the height of the COVID situation. And so they're talking about people wearing masks and, you know, people getting sick and, and they were vaccinated and or checked before they got to the uh the hotel or the lodge or whatever. It, I was like, okay, this old. Like, ain't nobody caring about COVID no more. But okay, I'll watch her. And so, they start separating into their rooms. And you already know what it's about to give. You already know what's about to happen. They drink this nasty-ass wine. They coughing stuff up. And that, I feel like the wine was what cursed them. Child, I don't know. And then... You know, we start seeing different set pieces of all these people as they separate themselves into the lodge. Before that, we get like a, you know, fire pit moment and they're, for whatever reason, have to discuss their fears. I don't know why this woman is like, hey, I have a great idea. Let's talk about our fears. Since we're in this lodge and we're in the woods and it's dark and it's a campfire and we're here to celebrate my home girl and her birthday, but let's talk about our fears so we can push everything away. What? I was, I, I couldn't understand that concept at the bonfire, this diverse collective group of folk want to talk about their fears. One person scared of King Bacchus, scared of police brutality. Then you have another person um, who holds on to a necklace because she's afraid. Then you have another person who, T.I., I think, was afraid of blood or something like that. I'm like, these some weird fears, and they're very specific fears. The white man was, you know, uh, afraid of being in tight spaces. I'm like, all right, all right, so, okay, kumbaya, my lord, and let's talk about our fears. Don't know why. Don't know why this is pretty high end or tempting, but it's not. Why are we doing this? And we're supposed to be celebratory and helping someone celebrate their birthday. It just was, it was just weird to me. Then they get in the thing, they drink the nasty ass wine and stuff starts happening. Now, the only smart one in this whole film, as stuff starts to happen, child, they, they get this new spot. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get through this review. What is it about black film and horror where black people are drowning in the ocean or drowning oh, as they're asleep? There's like water coming out their mouth. What is that about? I don't understand that. I, I, like, I, I, I don't, I, I can't figure that out. I'm like, so you got the girl sleeping and water is like coming out her mouth and the ceiling, the ceiling is dripping water and then spiders are here. Why? Where, where does that come from? Can someone help me out? Is that some like religious black thing? Like, cause it was in the nanny too. And I'm like, what is this? Somebody please help me out in the comments. And then <laughs> we get 
get this news break. Oh, there's a virus and people are dying and you can't breathe it in the air or some, some crap. And then this black woman out of nowhere, I think it's Jessica Elaine, I think. She come, she come up. <laughs> and she afraid for her life. She like, guys, did you see what they just said on the TV? Oh, I, I don't think, I don't think we should be here anymore. So, I think I'm just gonna go. I told y'all last night that my fear was not being able to be there for my kid. And I just feel like I have to get back to them. Or else I'm never gonna see them again. I think you should all leave with me from this lodge. It's just not. I don't think it's gonna be safe. You do understand, right? I have to get back to my kid. Now, that was the performance she gave, and I know I was not giving it. Okay, I'm like, what is happening here? But she's the only one that survives in this whack-ass movie because she decides to leave. Now, when she left, I thought she was going to get got in the truck, but we never see her again. <laughs> we never see her again. We never see her again until the end. She's sending the girl text messages talking about, I hope y'all all right. <laughs> She's like, I hope y'all are right, but baby, I'm here with my child. My child's safe. I... She said, oh, nothing. The news was fake. Nothing really happened. We're we're over here at, we're going to Six Flags. We had to park. <laughs> we had to park. I'm watching Nugget right now. I'm watching Nugget. Hey, Nugget, be safe. I'm like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. Then, then, hold on. They find out about the news. T.I. got... T.I. got David. He's sick. He coughing and stuff. He like, <coughs> I'm not sick. <coughs> I'm not sick. He's sweating and perspiration is all over the place. He's sloshing sweat as he coughing and stuff. I'm not sick. He cussing people out and stuff. They come to the door. Not, not, not. I just want to check on you, T.I. You all right? Leave me alone. I'm not sick. I'm not sick sweating and stuff. I'm like, okay. Terrence J and Ido decide that they want to get uh, T.I. out the house. <laughs> Not out the house, but they want to get him out his room where the door is closed. <laughs> to walk his sick behind to an eerie basement where there's a locking room that they could lock from the outside. I think it was like an old freezer or something. So they decide to get T.I. to come out. They're like, T.I., Something happened to such and such. He's sick or something happened. We need your help. We need your help to help him. Something wrong. You got to come with us. Come with us. <laughs> T.I. like, all right, I'm coming. T.I., mind you, T.I. been sick the whole time and he coughing and sneezing everywhere, coughing. And they worried that he's sick. But these two men go to get him from his closed door private quarters where he's kept himself isolated from everyone to walk him through the lodge, down to the basement, to put him in another closed room. But they feel that because it's in the basement, it's safer. If this thing is airborne, so says the news, and this man is coughing, and y'all done got tested and all this and, and all that, why y'all want to remove him from a room where y'all ain't breathing his air? Just to move him somewhere else. Made no sense. What are we talking about here? Made absolutely no sense. And then the way that they get him out the room, they, so they get him out the room. They walk him down the stairs to the basement. They walk him in front of the closed lock room that they're about to throw him in. And then, right before they throw him in the room, they decide to put on masks so that they won't get sick. Mess me with the bullshit. Are you serious? Who wrote this F ass shit? I couldn't believe it. And then how are you T.I.? And how are you Terrence J? And how are you Ido, even though I don't know who the hell you are? And this is an okay scene in the script. When y'all read this in the script, y'all thought this was okay? The movie was trash. Trash. And then we get to the end and the sole survivor, just in case y'all want to watch this whack ass shit, I'm not going to tell you what happened to everybody else. It was a comedy. That was the only way I could get through this movie. I had to look at it like a comedy. It was Scary Movie 17. 
without the Wayans. Because the Wayans done gone and they buried already. That's how trash ass this movie was. I could not believe I went to go see this. I could not believe I sat through it. People walked out of the theater. People walked out of the theater I was in here in Atlanta, Georgia, where T.I. lives, and they was not feeling this movie. The sole, the sole survivor is the person that was supposed to get married to, or the person's party, the black woman. I think it's Meg, uh, I mean, no, Bianca. Right, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know why movies like this get made. I really don't. And then at the same time, like I said, name one good, phenomenal, phenomenally acted, production value, all of that movie, Black lead horror film. G give me, give me one, give me one. I I can't think of one. I can't. Anyways, this has been my review. I wonder what y'all thought of this movie. Leave your comments below. Let me know how you feel. And as always, thank you for watching. Deuces.